Hey, um, good afternoon to Singapore and Southeast Asia, and good morning to our Nordic audience today. Uh, my name is Sami Askelainen from Nordic Innovation House, and I'm going to be your host again today. So it is my great pleasure to warmly welcome you all to our Water Waste Food uh, Virtual Marketing Program. And today we are very lucky to have a, have a session with Tomra. And uh, as always, some housekeeping rules before we start. Uh, please keep yourself muted uh, when you're not presenting or asking questions. Uh, we do have time then allocated for the Q&A at the end of the session, but uh, as always, uh, whenever you some questions comes to your mind, feel free to use the chat and then we will pick up the uh, questions from there. Uh, please also then remember to indicate to whom your question is uh, for. Uh, we are also recording this session and then the recording and uh, all the presentations will be shared with all the participants in uh, 24 hours. Good, but uh, let's then have a look at our agenda today, uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, we are very lucky to have uh, uh, Anu Pamatu Ahi uh, from Tombra. Uh, she's a vice president uh, of, of business development covering the whole APEC region. And then after the Tomra presentation, we will hand over the stage uh, to Nordic companies. We have eight presenting today, uh, seven minutes each. And then at the end, we have still time for the, uh, for the Q&A to cover all the burning questions. And then from, uh, for Anupa and uh, uh, Tomra team, if there is somebody else joining, uh, when and if you see something interesting today and then if, if you want to continue the dialogue with the, with the companies uh, there's a couple of options to do that uh, one is to use our meeting scheduler uh, we will post the link to the chat um, and that calendar basically covers uh, this week because this is our second program week but uh, no worries you can always uh, send us an email of, of the list of the companies who you'd like to meet, and then we will connect you uh, with them so then you can continue, continue the dialogue. Uh, good. We have eight companies today. Uh, we have grouped them into three different groups. Uh, we have one exception today because N2 applied directly, but they need to ask to the other meeting, so we're going to uh, let them go first. But uh, after that, we have a group one, which is all about the industrial waste water solutions. And then the second group is all about organic waste. And also the N2 applied and Reclima actually on the second group, although they're presenting first today. And then the last but not least, we have a river recycle. Uh, uh, and Janne will tell us how uh, river cleaning can be as a free service. And uh, with that, and without any further ado, uh, Anupa, thanks again for being uh, with us uh, here today. And then I'm going to hand over the stage to you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm not very familiar with Zoom, so let me allow me to share the screen first and then I can start with my introduction. So can you all see my screen? Yes, we can. Brilliant. Um, so thank you for the opportunity, uh, Sami and for Krister. Um, it's, it's, um, it's a pleasure to be able to um, share um, our experience and our insights from this region with the wider um, Nordic group of companies that are eager to enter into Singaporean market particularly and possibly also in the kind of wider Southeast Asian, Asian region. Uh, my name is Anupa. Uh, I'm based out in Sydney. Um, so I'm of Indian origin, but I've been living in Sydney now for close to 20 years. So this is home. Um, and I do operate uh, and manage um, growing and new emerging markets for Tomra collection services uh, in the Asian and Pacific region. So currently my key markets include uh, very much the Indian subcontinent, uh, which includes Sri Lanka and the neighboring countries, um, some Pacific islands uh, such as Fiji, um, um, and also some kind of um, islands around in the Indian Ocean, such as Mauritius and Maldives. Um, and we are also looking at um, um, Asian markets, particularly Vietnam, um, Malaysia, Thailand, uh, and very much Singapore. 
uh, and I'm also very actively working in Indonesia. So this is kind of the um, current active uh, areas of work. Uh, Tomra is already present in Asia. So for those who are not familiar with Tomra, I will be doing a small introduction. Um, but we are present in Asia. In uh, We have offices in China. So our head office is in China with a manufacturing and research facility in Xiamen. Uh, we are present in Japan, in Korea, uh, as well as in Taiwan. Um, so we do have um, also um, people employed in India uh, and now also in Singapore. So as you can see, there is a lot of opportunity and we are starting to make ourselves more and more visible in these places. And we have a very good reason to do that, which I will be talking about in a bit. I'm assuming that we will be taking questions in the end, so I will go in one flow, uh, Sami. But if you feel the need to interrupt and ask something that's burning, and don't hesitate to stop me. Um, so um, we are essentially um, a technology company. Um, we were founded on an innovation in 1972. So we were the uh, inventors of the reverse vending machine. Um, and we have then since then grown into creating uh, sensor-based solutions, um, which have a lot of applications, as you will see in the following pages. But the essence of the company is in innovation, in providing solution to, um, to the management or a, kind of towards the aim of or a greater mission of resource productivity. Um, and that still remains the case. So we are um, a Norwegian company, of course, um, and we are publicly listed. We um, are um, we have about four thousand three hundred plus employees, and we are um, growing. Um, and, uh, and again, for the right reasons, we recently announced, only very freshly announced, a new female CEO who will be joining us somewhere later in the year. So our current CEO. Uh, Stefan, who uh, is a great leader, is stepping down from his responsibilities. And so we are kind of entering into this new era of Tomra, um, kind of having a more, uh, I will say, a fresh look um, at, the, at the growing needs of the world. So that's quite exciting for us. So essentially, we can um, broadly break our company into three key verticals. So we have Tomra Collection. And then Tomra recycling and food, uh, principal application of technology is the same, so sensor-based sorting, but in terms of business units, you can kind of split them into two. So Tomra collection solutions are basically collecting uh, largely beverage containers in PET, um, glass, um, aluminum, metal, Tetra Pak also in some cases through our reverse vending machines, and then we recover that material as part of the value chain. Tomra recycling mining, we basically have the sensor-based technology at city level based collection solutions to sort the solid based collection. Um, uh, and, and so we, we basically, I would like to say we can sort, our machines can sort anything that has a surface area. So I'm talking solid, uh, solid based only, I'm not talking organic. Um, and this is mechanical uh, recycling. Uh, we apply the same in mining. Um, we, I believe, discovered one of the largest diamonds quite recently um, in a very high quality um, uh, mining sorting. In food, again, it has a lot of applications. We can check a lot of attributes of food that we may be sorting in terms of how ripe it is. We can sort it for any genetic or disease, diseases, genetical issues. Uh, we can sort it on color. We can sort it on size, growth, sweetness. There are many attributes. And it really has a lot of applications in the industry in kind of preventing uh, food waste uh, at the very start of the process in kind of making sure that you are supplying high nutrient, high quality food at the right time of the process and so on and so forth. So then um, I'm going to focus more on the recycling and collection side of things because that's where I am working and that's where what I'm promoting in the Southeast Asian markets. Um, essentially, um, we are in a, a, in a very unique position, Tomra. We have been talking about uh, 
recycling and reusing material from the get-go, from the day we were born. So circularity has kind of been uh, part of who we are. It may be a newer buzzword right now, but we have worked with governments around the world and pushed and pushed around this whole fundamental concept of um, uh, mechanical recycling of collected material. So it's very much in our DNA. Um, and, and fortunately for us, we have applications across the value chain, right from collection all the way to, to sorting and until you can give it to processors then to make, you know, um, uh, process the material and kind of reuse it for packaging. Um, and potentially if we are collecting bottles then back to bottles, that is a full level cycling. So we are not talking about down, down cycling. So, so we're, not, we're not promoting necessarily collecting the material and making, then making shirts or shoes out of it because then you're making it very difficult to recover that plastic. So you kind of have given it a second life, but then you stop the chain right there. Um, so we, we, we are talking about a process where you can kind of keep going endlessly and so you um, you don't have to rely on virgin materials so you're kind of reducing the need to use virgin material as you go so that's the that's the underlying concept then where you're collecting it in kind of the mixed waste and not clean collection as you can do through the reverse vending machines and in those cases food application may not be possible of the collected material because of the quality but again it can still be very high quality um, flakes that can be used back for packaging material uh, within the industry. Um, Tomra um, um, realize and we have worked very closely with governments this is kind of a large part of what I do uh, we are often invited by many countries and we are often asked to you know, a very simple question, what is the cost of your technology? How much is the machine? Uh, how much is the sorter cost? And how much does the reverse vending machine cost? How many do, you, do we need to, you know, set the system? And usually my answer is that that is not even the starting point. We don't sell boxes, we sell solutions and technology is only an enabler. It's just an aid in the system, you could very much have a system that's fully manual and yet achieve really good results because the underlying thing is not technology. Technology plays a really, really good role in um, you know, fraud prevention and reporting and auditing and getting compliance in making sure it's, you know, it's neat, it's efficient, and it will definitely, you know, kind of double your results and whatnot. But it's not what's making it work. What's making it work is the commitment from a government, the policies, the legal framework, the education that goes around it. And until you don't have that, we are very, very reluctant to sell our machines. So let me give you an example. I've, I've, um, I'm of Indian origin and I had this burning desire to kind of go back to my country and help them with the waste crisis. So I've been meeting with the government at central level, all the ministries and everybody um, to kind of put a solution in place. Um, and all they want uh, for me to do is to sell them about 10,000 or so machines um, in, in, in just one state. And I have been pushing back on this because what will happen is that there will be this immense drive to talk about these machines. There will be a media coverage. Um, there will be a whole heap of other things. And then because there is no obligation on anybody, the interest will die down soon. And then we are, you know, dealing with a whole heap of junk um, that nobody has um, any idea what to do. So talking about market entry, why am I sharing this story with you is because you are all looking to enter into these markets. It's very important that we understand the kind of long term sustainability of these solutions. Um, so, so it's very important that we understand how will this be a financially um, viable uh, value proposition to all the players in the value chain. How can, it, at the end of the day, we are all here to do business, but our businesses fortunately are uh, with a greater purpose. So we are trying to solve a global problem. And, and if we can do this while giving a, a economic incentive to the players in the field, and to the government, and we have a win-win situation. And that's the only thing that will make it work. 
Um, so I will not spend a lot of time on this diagram. I think I've put it in for a long time enough on the screen for you to have a look. But it, all it is basically saying is there are, it all starts with collection mechanism, how you collect, how you move it to material recovery. And as you can see, we've kind of indicated that dry waste can be collected all in one go. You don't need 10 bins because the technology does allow you to then separate it at the material recovery facility. So then it's much easier to educate people on what to do and much more efficient to recover it at a recovery facility. But of course you can separate the organic waste and that should be dealt, dealt with separately. You then have recovery, you create the demand in the market um, and you kind of close the loop by selling the same packaging back to the consumers. So again, um, our market position is very strong. I'm very proud to say that um, we have about 70% market share in reverse vending machines. Um, we are almost collecting 40 billion containers a year. Um, and can I say, and this figure may, this, this, this slide may have a slightly different picture, but what we're saying is we're collecting more than 35 billion containers every year. And it is not even 2.2% of the beverage containers that are produced and sold in the market. So you can imagine just how much more work needs to be done to capture what is otherwise absolutely gold um, that is not being collected back into the system. We have a lot of success stories. Uh, why I want to kind of mention Australia here is because it's very new, it's modern in its approach. And it's a very good example of how um, Tomra entered into a market and decided to not push a traditional system, but to adapt to the needs. And this is again, very important for all those companies who are planning to enter into these new markets with the tested and tried solutions. So when we talk about these deposit markets, which most of the Nordic countries are quite used to the concept, you know that you go, you expect a, a vending machine in a retail store where you will be buying your groceries. You can go and, um, you can go and return them and you may decide to donate the money. You may decide to even do a lottery with it, um, as is the case in many countries, or you may decide to simply get your money back, which is actually the deposit that you'd paid while buying the bottle. Either or, it's a very good system and encourages the right kind of behavior. And it's also quite convenient because it's in a retail store where you're expected to go once or twice a week. That's how um, our societies work in, in kind of the Western, um, kind of the European world, if you like. But Australia was very different. Um, and we had to enter the market because there was clearly a need. It was being talked about. But um, the objectives of the government were vastly different um, to the objectives of, say, some of the European governments we had been working with. And that decides the design and the outcome of what you're trying to achieve. So that's another very key point to keep in mind is what is it that the government is trying to achieve? And our solutions, no matter how effective they are, are they really uh, addressing the objective of the government, you know? So, and, and do I need to innovate? Do I need to do something different? Is, is, this, is this a copy? and paste process. That's really important to establish very early on in the process. Otherwise it can be quite challenging. So New South Wales has a very good uh, curbside collection system. We are very proud of it. We have a yellow bin, we have a red bin, and we have a green bin. The green bin is for um, um, kind of the green waste. Um, you know, from your gardening and back, we, we, we have huge houses. We, you know, we do a lot of gardening here. So it's really for that. We have a mixed waste bin. And then we have, um, and sorry, the green is also for organic. And then we have the yellow bin, which is for all the recyclable material. And we have very good labeling system where you can look at a packaging material and if it has the recycling label, you simply put it in the yellow bin. And everybody knows how to use it. We have, I would say, 95% compliance, which is very good. Um, and, you know, if, if I'm accidentally putting a, let's say, a rinsed milk bottle in my red bin, my son will stop me and tell me not to do that. So that's really how trained they are at school and everywhere else. So 
then why did the government want to introduce the deposit scheme? The, we are also very outdoor nation in Australia. We lo love our outdoors. We love camping. We love going to uh, national forests. We love um, walking, bushwalking, and so on and so forth. And so the bottles on the go are often found littered in these national park areas and so on and so forth and beaches. And even with the, because it's a very big tourist uh, uh, city, especially Sydney, we have this massive problem where tourists will come and, you know, just trash the beaches with the bottles. So the objective was litter reduction. That was all. That's all the government wanted to do was to reduce this litter in these uh, places. And so the government decided to have the deposit return scheme. So the bottles on the go could come back into the system. And what we were amazed to find was that we had to come up with a solution where we could not put these machines in the retail because of legal, uh, because of a legal complication. So when you, these bottles, the, these empties, as you call them, are actually classified as waste. So you cannot have waste next to food, fresh food. And by the simple definition, we could not place them inside the retail store. So we had to come up with this, uh, as you can see on the top left corner, the, the kiosk setups, which were kind of closely conveniently located within car parks near grocery setups or retail or shopping centers to make it easy for people. Um, and if within within we it, this this scheme started in 2017 December, so technically 2018. So within three four years, we have collected over five billion containers. We have achieved amazing charity and donation drives from this. So uh, Australia went through fires. Australia went through uh, floods, and we were able to raise absolutely outstanding amounts of charity through this uh, system. And lo and behold, we have ownership of extremely clean um, PET. Um, and so we have this market where we are being asked to sell this material overseas because of the pure demand, which is being driven by European Union's directives about having recycled content in the bottles by 2025 and then so on and so forth. So this is kind of, a very good um, example of how the policies in different countries and globally come into play and drive behaviors with the right solutions that are addressing the objectives of a government. So, so, so keep in mind as you're entering the market about kind of the long term uh, and the medium term play of policies and objectives. Um, Sami, I'm not sure how much time I have. I know you said seven minutes for everybody, but I feel I may have crossed. Yeah, so that that was for the for the companies who are pitching. Uh, you you had fifteen minutes. I guess we are a little bit over that. But uh, if you wanna wanna wrap up quickly, so feel free to. Okay, so, so. then I shall do that. Um, then I shall uh, leave Lithuania another very good example of um, achieving very high recycling rates very very quickly, um, and and kind of. Uh, example of mixed weight sorting. We have recently um, pioneered uh, by our association with Borealis a fully um, um, automated um, mechanical recycling plant in Germany, um, and um, this is this is one of the first of its kind. So I can talk more about it later on. Um, talking about particularly in Singapore for companies that are looking to enter, I made this slide to kind of show how the government is thinking, what have they done? And I'm very impressed with what Singaporean government have done. They have gone, looked at the extended producer responsibility as not the driving force, but actually a part of their bigger vision. So they came up with zero waste master plan. And under that zero waste master plan, they, um, they approved a uh, Resource Sustainability Act 2019, under which then they have these various different programs going on. What is missing on the screen is food waste, which is also part of the Resource Sustainability Act. So this RSA 2019 is looking at e-waste, at the plastic waste, and also food waste. 
And then there is the Singapore's whole of nation, green nation plan also in play that's kind of uh, complementing the gaps otherwise um, not identified in the RSA Act. And so step by step, the government is mandating packaging reporting and placing these small systems under kind of the umbrella law to bring it all together to a greater vision. So, so that Singapore government has done very, um, very properly. It's an absolutely brilliant example for other Asian countries. And I'm already quite active in Vietnam, uh, talking to the Ministry of um, uh, Natural Resources and Environment, and also suggesting that they have a similar vision drawn up. So we are working very closely with the government's policy department, looking at all aspects of waste management um, and also extended producer responsibility. So what, what are we doing in, um, in, in Singapore right now? Uh, we are extensively engaging with National Environmental Agency that is responsible, uh, which is kind of the uh, implementation body for policy um, and execution of all the various acts and um, uh, kind of solid waste and other food waste and other um, uh, uh, environmental objectives that the government wants to meet. We are working and mapping the waste ecosystem. We are looking at the challenges. We are hiring people. Um, we already have hired a few people. We are looking at potential partners to um, be able to play a role with the, with the government in, in one of these um, 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 one of these initiatives that I just uh, showed you on the previous slide. And then we are kind of developing an investment strategy to see that there is a sustainable business model for us. We have a vision for Singapore and we, we, we believe that Singapore can lead the way. We believe that Singapore can be kind of the uh, innovation um, showcase hub for uh, the Southeast Asian region. And we believe that uh, the government has kind of the right mindset and plan to do that. So, so this, is, this is where we are at. We have established some really good relationships with various stakeholders uh, in the value chain and also with NEA. So we'll be happy to assist um, with any, any questions or queries in terms of how that engagement process can work with, uh, with the interested people. So I'm gonna stop here, Sami, and then uh, hand over back to you. All right. Uh, excellent. Thank you so much, Anupan. I think one, one key message for, for our uh, Nordic companies as well, as, as you saw, and uh, that what's been kind of like popping up many times during these last couple of weeks is that like, that Singapore is really that, that gateway and, and like many other countries in the region uh, are benchmarking what Singapore is doing. So in that case, if you're able to create a successful story for your company here, you know, it, it will be benchmarking the region and, and, and then the adaptation, uh, the chances for that are definitely higher. Super, uh, but thank you so much, Anupam. And um, let's jump to it then to the end of the pitching mode, right? So seven minutes each, and we will start with N2 Applied and Reclima, and we have two gentlemen from Norway, so Eric and Ivar. So with that, over to you. Thank you. And um, happy to be here this uh, morning, uh, my time at least, uh, to give an introduction to what we have to offer to the market, even though it is not in line with uh, Tomra or uh, related to it. My name is uh, Eirik Dahlberg. I'm head, the head of uh, global sales at N2 Applied. And uh, with me in this program is uh, Ivar Hagemund, the CEO of company Reclima that we are working with in this project. 30 years from now, uh, there will be a global population of 10 billion people. Uh, which means that we will need to increase uh, food production by a massive 30%, no, 50%, sorry, compared to the current level. And we need to do so in a sustainable way where we ensure lowering of the greenhouse gases, uh, where we uh, also remove pollution in the process. 
and then also trying to step away from or at least not increasing the use of uh, mineral fertilizer which is polluting in singapore uh, there is a uh, waste problem and food waste alone represents 750,000 tons every year which potentially otherwise could uh, mean 1.25 terawatt delivered uh, to the grid and uh, we believe that we can be part of solving both these problems if we do things correctly and uh, team up with biogas uh, providers then we have the complete infrastructure in uh, n2 applied and uh, reclima n2 applied is supplying the plasma unit uh, that you can see in the middle of this slide and that plasma unit is using electricity to split the air into nitrogen and oxygen and we are making then new bindings uh, nitrogen oxides that we are plowing into either uh, manure coming from the farm or to digestate from the biogas plant and what we are then creating is a highly potent fertilizer that we call neo nitrogen enriched organic uh, fertilizer and this can be used uh, in singapore for instance uh, in rooftop farming uh, and other fields and greenhouses and at the same time then minimizing greenhouse gases and pollution in uh, Bingham Farm in Northern Ireland, we did a pilot uh, installation in 2018. We have done several and also other uh, commercial installations after that. Uh, this is a uh, farm having 750 dairy cows and they have their own biogas plant. But the principle uh, would be the very same either uh, or whether it is a farm or it is then based on other feedstock uh, from food, for instance and uh, the key message is sustainability all through our main drivers is the growing uh, population uh, we adhere to the targets uh, set out in the paris agreement and then we are working locally towards the singapore waste and water problem over to you Ivar. thank you eric uh, my name is, good afternoon to you in Singapore. My name is Ivar Hagmon. I'm working in Reclima, which is a R and D company owned by, among others, uh, two uh, major waste companies in Norway. The tomatoes you see here are produced only on material from uh, composting and from digestive coming out of the, our bio, biogas plantation in the Oslo area. Our business idea is, as in, in Norway, waste food has been and are uh, one of the biggest challenges to do in a, a circular way uh, all, all out. And in uh, our solution, we have managed to take 20% of the waste, uh, food waste, organic waste in Norway, and made a, a food production, circular food production, which are actually contributing to solving today's organic boost weighting and that's a concept for the country. Next please. What we do is on, on, on technology wise, it's, it's a known technology more or less. We have some uh, technology development in, in our, uh, our greenhouse, which I will come back to, but we use known technology, but we put it in a system with, together with the, with the farmers in, in our area. We take uh, food waste from the consumer, we take digest uh, manure from the animals, uh, farmers, and we produce a material which we can uh, have all, uh, back to the farmers as a, as a fertilizer. It's an organic fertilizer. In the greenhouse, you see here, we take the CO2 from, uh, take out from the biogas production and stimulate the production. And to be able to do that, we have to close the greenhouse more than a normal greenhouse uh, uh, technology can uh, make to do today. So we have bubbles in a double wall. So we use bubbles to to uh, 
reduced the uh, emission and we, we are capturing about uh, two times more CO2 in this one than we do in a normal technology. Thank you. Next, please. To be able to grow with the material we, we can we get out from the biogas, we have developed our own growing technology, which we call di digaponics. It's an organic way. We use no uh, pesticides. We use uh, no artificial um, uh, fertilizer. And we use worms, as you see here, to stimulate the, the development of the soil. We see that these plants, uh, this, this soil has better quality after one year growing than it had in the beginning. So actually be contributing to a better soil. This technology we also use uh, are on the free land now. Our technology are developed from, from scratch uh, uh, here and are now, uh, this is our pilot. Uh, we, here we produce food for the consumer market in, in Norway. And we, uh, we are working to upscale this one to take more of the CO2 from the production as a benefit for our owners to win contracts in our market. Because the CO2 is getting now as an asset to, to win contracts, the CO2 emission. Thank you. One more. We also are looking at scaling up our circular solution of waste handling. And then we're scaling down. Just Two seconds, please. One more. We are looking for investors, partners, access to influencers, and cooperation with uh, with partners in consulting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Eric and Ivor. Uh, okay. Next, we're going to jump back to our our usual routine, and uh, then we have Devako uh, pitching next, and we have Tony from the Conversa. So, Tony, over to you. Thank you, Sami. I'll share my screen. Hello, my name is Tony Franti from Debug Limited. Thank you for this opportunity to present our company and offering, and I'll begin with a short introduction. Clean water is the base for life, but still 80% of all wastewater is completely untreated. A great number of wastewater treatment facilities need to be built, maintained and updated as a partial solution for this challenge. Good and reliable equipment have a very important role in this, and this is where we can help. Under our Deva brand, we design, manufacture and sell equipment for sludge thickening, dewatering and sludge removal. Effective sludge collection and dewatering is important in a fight to stop climate change and destruction of nature. It enables methods to reach sustainability goals and leads to circular economy by offering alternative source for energy and other uses for the dewatered sludge cake. At least the collected matter is not directly released to the nature. We have 35 years of experience in sludge treatment. We specialize in manufacturing high quality equipment that work as designed and promised. And we also offer supervisioning, installation and after sales services. Our equipment are made in Finland and we operate under ISO 9001 standards. Our operations are based in Finland, but in many locations we are able to support our customers through our partner and reseller network. For sludge and scum collection and removal, we offer chain and flight type chain scraper systems. These are the most sophisticated systems for sludge and scum removal. Our scrapers offer great benefits, optimal and minimum land and space use, high removal efficiency, low capital and maintenance cost, and easy installation. Our superior design and non-metallic DEVA components offer top-class features, performance, and durability. These systems can be used in multiple applications, such as water and wastewater treatment, oily water, desalination, duff tanks, sand traps, and grease removal. We offer all possible configurations for rectangular basins, from top and bottom scraping to multi-layer systems, and supply all the needed accessories for these systems, including scum pipe speech plates and system controls. In sludge thickening and dewatering, our solutions are based around belt filter presses and gravity belt thickness. Belt filter presses offer great advantages, such as low energy consumption, suitability for various applications, and relatively high sludge dryness. Total lifetime costs are extremely competitive. Investment, running, and maintenance costs are low, and the presses have a very long lifespan. Reparations are rather easy, cheap, and do not require long standing times. Our portfolio covers solutions from small scale to high capacity municipal and industrial projects. 
or alternatively from cost-effective solutions to industry-leading features. We supply all the needed accessories for full dewatering cell, including flocculators, polymer units, control systems, and conveyors. We are continuously developing our products. One of our ongoing development projects is to bring cloud-based and AI-assisted monitoring to our systems. This offers various benefits, such as decreased power consumption, extended system lifetime, and overall process optimization. Our equipment are trusted and used by municipal and industrial customers worldwide, from small private companies to leading international contractors. Here you can see a few of our partners and customers. Our track record includes over 3,500 chain scraper systems and over 1,000 belt filter presses and gravity belt thickener deliveries to over 80 countries. Next, I will show a few example cases. Langat Centralized Sewage Treatment Plant in Malaysia is a mega project treating wastewater coming from nearly a million people. For this project, we delivered 96 chain scraper systems and 48 scum pipes. Kamana Sewage Treatment Plant is mainly a mega project in Philippines that will treat wastewater from about 1.2 million households. A full product portfolio will be used in this project for sludge and scum removal and dewatering. I have our biggest and fastest growing market, China, as an example of a specific market area. I've selected Wengzhou Wastewater Treatment Plant as an example case. For this challenging project, we delivered 24 two layer chain scraper systems that help to solve the challenges with space limitations in a partly underground plant construction. In order to showcase business opportunities that are our equipment offer, I want to mention Atal Engineering. Atal is one of our six resellers in China. This huge company is one of the leading Chinese electrical and mechanical engineering groups. They began as our customer in a contractor role as they needed equipment for their own project. Based on the successful and profitable projects, they have developed Deva chain scraper systems and related services to be one of their actual business lines, stretching outside the typical contractor role. We know that it takes much more than just good equipment to make the customer happy and reach a successful delivery project. Good products, overall quality, know-how, flexibility, accuracy, honesty, and right attitude are all needed to establish a trustworthy partnership. Choose Deva for smoother, smoother projects, better processes, overall cost savings, and cleaner future. We want to find new business opportunities, and we believe that many companies operating in this field can benefit from our offering. We can operate directly with end customers, but typically cooperation is done with contractors. Most importantly, we are looking for resellers to be our local partners. For this, we have great needs in Southeast Asia and in Singapore. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for your time, and please contact us if you find any, any of this interesting or want to know more. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Okay, uh, next company is coming from Norway. It's called Scanwater, and we have a DAO presenting their solution. Thank you, Sammy. So good morning and good afternoon. Um, my name is Tao. I'm a sales and marketing director at the Scandinavia Water Technology. So who we are, we are engineering company dealing with the water business and uh, we are a private owned company and based in Norway since uh, 1985. We are part of uh, Muslim Indian group. Uh, Muslim Indian is uh, owned 100% by the management. We, uh, it is established in 1932. We have uh, 170 employees in Norway and about hundred of them are engineers. Uh, Mosomania owns company in uh, different locations, for example, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Estonia, Latvia, France, Kenya, as well as China, totally in uh, 15 different locations. So what the Scanwater specialized in providing, we provide the solutions in uh, water solution projects as a turnkey solution uh, supplier, uh, humanitarian at uh, solutions, municipal preparedness solutions. So today's problem of increased uh, uh, urban population imposed uh, higher environmental challenges to the modern city. At the same time, city must be optimized the well-being and uh, minimize its environmental impact. In many urban areas, sewer systems are overloaded and do not allow to have a more 
for the more development. Um, but in addition, through the current handling of organic household and boiling waste, uh, on the one hand, valuable source have are lost, and on the other hand, stress the existing treatment infrastructure, but also not treated properly, contributed to the environmental pollution. So ScanWater has conducted experiments on the development of innovative water man management solution. We call it the uh, Green Energy. We have a trade market Green Energy. And this Green Energy solution has uh, developed under the CU Green project. It's the one of the uh, EU uh, Hauzo 2020 project, which co-founded from the EU and China with a total funding of 9 million euro. And it is a smart green solution for integrated uh, water and the sanitation, stormwater management, energy supply, and the nutrient management in the cities based uh, on the principle of a resource recovery and the safe reuse and to increase the resilience of the cities, make urban development more climate environment and uh, human friendly with nearly zero emission, circular economic, lower climate and the water footprint. So we elaborated a little bit in the green building infrastructure. Um, green energy will reduce water consumption by using water saving fixtures as a uh, vacuum toilet and the reuse uh, green water source, facilitate the recycling of nutrient to the urban or peri-urban agriculture, almost eliminate uh, pollution of surface water, integrated with the biogas reactor, will allow biogas production from the toilet waste and the organic household waste and delivering heat and the power but also nutrient retent to su support the greenhouse food production so this is a summer achievement but not the, at least from the project as an example product of the resource recovery from the black water Another benefit example by using vacuum based technology, the vacuum sewer will be much more energy efficient uh, as well as the safety. Since uh, the vacuum system is a closed loop system and it will not have any of a leakage. And so far we have uh, several pilot projects in a different location, uh, three in China, uh, two, in the, two projects in Beijing and one in South of China. Uh, as well as one in uh, Norway, as shown in the picture. Uh, the project converted the old hospital facilities to uh, about 1,000 apartments. Um, what we are looking for, for in the program is uh, try to partner with the local, local companies who can develop uh, the market together with us. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Tom. And uh, then our next company is coming from Finland. Uh, it's called Sophie Filtration. And today we have Mikko presenting the solution. So Mikko with that, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Sami. Share my screen. And thank you, Anupa, really much for giving presentation of Tomra and giving the insight of uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, please confirm that you're able to see my screen. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Do you have two screens? All right. Now you're able to see. Yeah, now it is. Okay. I want to call the presentation mode. And then... Yeah, okay. okay. The stage is yours. Thank you. So we are Sophie Filtration. Uh, we are based in Finland, Espo, and we have uh, developed an innovative water filter. And I'm going to tell you how it is. Um, so basically, this is what we do. We help companies <clears throat> to purify water with profit. Uh, this is a zinc refinery. On the left-hand side, you can see uh, processed water uh, with a good amount of calcium carbonate, and it has been uh, treated with our sulfur filter 
uh, with 10 micron filter element uh, to generate clean water, which can be reused in a uh, process. Very often the resource itself is the water, what's being, uh, what's being uh, reused or purified that it can be discarded back to the nature uh, according to environmental limits. But the resource can be as well uh, the solid material what is removed from the from the water stream, or in the best cases, the resource are the both the clean water and the solid material. And this is what we help the customer to do to separate those two from each other. <clears throat> and how we do it? Uh, there are plenty of self-cleaning water filters in the market. Uh, very typical design is that there is a cylinder kind of a pressure housing and uh, and uh, inside the housing there is a cylinder cylinder kind of a filtration element and the water is flowing through the element and that purifies the water. Well, we have similar kind of design, a cylinder housing, cylinder element, but there is something what we do differently comparing to all our competitors. First of all, uh, we have novel cross flow design. It means that we are feeding the water inside the system tangentially. So the feed water is being fed to the system and it starts rotating the filtration element. This rotating movement helps to keep the filtration element clean and clogging the element takes longer period of time than just feeding feeding the water normally. Second of all, we are filtering the water from outside in, and this is very important. Most of the water filters uh, feed the water from inside the system, and then the water flows from inside out, and then the backwashing happens from outside in. Well, we do it differently because uh, the filter element can sustain a lot of pressure from inside out. So that's how our backwashing happens. Most of the companies are using only vacuum nozzles to backwash their systems, and those are pretty weak. We are using six bar pressurized air <clears throat> to hit the backwash. It's really like a hammer, and it has a lot of strength to clean the system. So we can, we can keep the system pretty clean even quite nasty kind of waters. And third of all, uh, we have a integrated ultrasonic transducer in the center of the system. So always uh, before the backwash, the ultrasound starts and it will loosen the particles which are stuck in our filter screen. And the screen size is what we are using uh, typically varies between 0.3 micron to 20 micron. And this is very different comparing to many other self-cleaning filters. So usually <clears throat> the other self-cleaning filters start filtering from about 20 micron. And if you think about very commonly used sand filter, in that case as well, the, the filtering rate is about 20 micron, but that's like that's already very loose for us. So we are usually filtering something like 0 0.5 micron or one micron. And to use this tight filter mess, you need to have very sophisticated backwashing system. And that's what we have. And we have a patent for the backwashing system. Um, our filter is uh, pretty different. So I understand that many customers want that we prove the concept before they want to invest in our technology. And, and we completely understand that, but that's completely fine. So uh, we do a lot of lab testing. Customers can send us their water samples and, and we run it through our system and we can measure how well our system purified the water. Uh, the sample can be shared with, the, uh, with either uh, uh, with the wet sample or dry sample, both are very okay. We do a lot of field piloting. And uh, then of course, we take care of our customers after the deals as well. Uh, next, I could maybe show a couple of reference cases. This is what we sold to <clears throat> Tampere, Finland. It's a 
waste incineration plant where it's condensate water and, and we are purifying the water first with a SOFI filter and then we deliver the hot water reverse osmosis system. The customer is reusing the system and the payback time was less than one year. These are our typical customer segments. Uh, it has a lot of variety, but uh, we could point out the mining sector. And I, I understood that Tombra has, well, some kind of activity in the mining industry. Uh, our team consists uh, of uh, very different kind of professionals. We could pinpoint our CEO, Ville Hakala, which has a long uh, background in the mining industry. And Steve Gluck, uh, which used to work as a director in a Dow Chemical R&D department. And uh, I think I'm a little bit uh, internet is lacking, but uh, well, that's it. Uh, in case Tomra is focusing on a liquid. Uh, material treatment, I would be very, very happy to talk more later. Thank you really much. Okay, thank you so much, Mikko, uh, for Sophie's presentation. Uh, next, we have Heli Karaila presenting a Walmet autom automation. Well, yes, thank you. Thank you, Samianta. Thank you for this presentation today. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not sharing my video because the net connection is a little bit bad, bad in my side. So my name is Heli Karaila and I'm working as a business manager in Valmet. Uh, together with my colleagues from uh, Valmet Indonesia, we are participating to this Nordic Innovation House event. So thank you for this opportunity. Uh, Valmet the head office is in is in Finland. And uh, last year, uh, the net sales was uh, about 3.7 billion euros, and there are over 14,000 professionals working globally. Wastewater is one of the growth area for Valmet's uh, automation business line. So there is a lack of accurate and reliable real-time measurement and optimizer applications, especially for the wastewater sludge process area. Sludge process area is very challenging because there is typically that much air and debris and crease in the process. Based on the end customer feedback, about 30% of the wastewater plant operational costs are coming from the sludge processing and sludge further treatment costs. And because of lack of reliable measurement and control solutions, the, this process phase is typically uh, controlled manually based on the laboratory analysis and visual look. So there is really a need for reliable measurement and control in this area. Valmet has offering for this, for this need. And uh, this is based on the 50 year measurement technology development, what we have done, especially in the palm and paper business area. So we have now offering as uh, advanced like advanced industrial quality measurement technology to the wastewater sector. And it is very important that we have not only moved uh, these technologies from pulp and paper to the wastewater, but we have further developed these technologies together with our end customers so that they really fit to this uh, wastewater sludge process area. We have over 2000 uh, references available globally. In order the end customer gets the best benefits uh, from the, from the real-time measurement, we have de developed uh, uh, also optimizer application called uh, Valmet Sluts Dewatering Optimizer, Valmet SDO, uh, that optimize the solid content at the, at the centrifuge process area, minimize uh, the centroid solid, uh, maximize the dewatering solid, as well as uh, minimize the polymer usage. With Valmet the DNA automation system, uh, it is possible to automate the whole wastewater process. It includes uh, process optimization, information management, environmental reporting, and conditional monitoring. 
For Valmet, it is very important that the end customers get the best benefits uh, from the process, and that's why this Valmet automation service is an important part of the offering. Also, Valmet industrial, in industrial inter internet solutions are an uh, important part of, of the offering as well. Valmet solid measurements are especially used uh, in, those, in the sludge process process area and we can cover all the sluts uh, all the sluts process solid measurement need the valmet industrial intended solutions combine advanced monitoring of wastewater plant data driven optimization and remote services from valmet performance center into a comprehensive solutions the purpose is to efficiently utilize data and valmet expertise to provide tangible benefits for our customers. So we have documented savings available, and here are a couple of those. Uh, the first one is coming from uh, Finland, uh, Tampere Vinikala, the wastewater plant, where we optimize the centrifuge uh, sludge uh, dewatering area. And with, uh, with Avalmet Solutions, uh, end customer was able to reduce uh, centrate or reject solid uh, by 50% uh, increase uh, the solid amount in the in the dewater uh, sludge as and in the same time so we decrease the polymer usage with 50 percent uh, the next case is coming from china so we have over 200 uh, cases available nowadays in in china and uh, here is one case shanghai taihe and uh, last year they decided to to include uh, Valmet uh, solutions to the primary clarifier as well as to the de sludge dewatering process area in order to increase the performance of the wastewater plant. Uh, then what I'd like to also inform is that these solid measurements are not only used in the, in the wastewater sector, but also in the, in the biogas uh, application. And here is one food waste case. And, uh, and we have really got a very, very reliable and good results also, also in that area. This is, uh, this is before the digester, and uh, then we have also measurement after the digester as well. So with the Valmet solutions, it is really possible to increase the performance and can get good savings. And what is important is the payback time can be as short as only a couple of months. Uh, in, in Singapore, uh, Nordic Innovation House event, um, we really like to show the benefits of using, using the application and Singapore is the water hub to the to this uh, Asia area. So we, we like to have new business partners, new customers, operators, new business partners like EPC distributors, engineering offices, and service providers. Here is uh, still our contact information and uh, we are happy to discuss more, more detail about our, our application. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Heli. Um, then our next company uh, is called Artas Fin, and we have Everen uh, presenting their solutions. So, Everen, over to you. We can see now the, the presenter notes. So, I need to change the screen. Uh, Evren, can you hear us? I can hear you. Uh, just a moment. I will try again. Yeah. How is it now? Yeah, looks good. Okay, good. Thank you. Hi, I'm Evren Dönmez, CEO of Artas Fin, House of State of the Art Solutions in Environmental Technologies. 
Artas Fin R&D expertise is capitalized on 40 years of engineering and manufacturing legacy of Artas sister companies in Finland, Germany, and in Turkey. Our office in Finland is located inside Alto University campus. We design, produce, and implement water, waste, air, and bioenergy solutions. We cover all four aspects of the environmental technologies. In water, we deliver pretreatment, filtration, softening, desalination, demineralization, and ultra pure water treatment plants. In waste, we deliver physical, chemical, biological, either anaerobic, aerobic, attached growth systems, or MBR technology together with sludge digestion and dewatering plants. Equally, we have flue gas treatment, such as desulfurization, chemical, biological, uh, and adsorption method, and bioenergy solution. We designed and supplied over 400 customers. This is one of our client testimon testimonials. Uh, to that customer, we delivered a customized, tailor-made, fully integrated solution kind of Lego blocks, targeting their water and organic waste problems. It also gives our customers the comfort of having one soul responsible for all their environmental needs. Our technologies solve problems dealing with access to clean water for drinking in rural and urban settings, water treatment for specific industrial use, wastewater reuse and recycling, wastewater and sludge disposal, organic waste management, waste gas treatment, and renewable energy from waste. We have experience in projects catering for 100 to 100,000 people. Our philosophy is providing integrated, modular, customized solutions operating with renewable energy. We drive change towards circular economy. Our products include Arto Reverse Osmosis Unit, Aruf Ultrafiltration System, Armo Mobile Ultra Pure Water Treatment Plant, Arpac Activated Sludge Based Sewage Treatment System, RMBR Membrane Bioreactor Based Biological Wastewater Treatment System Integrated with Solar Panels, Kimpac Chemical Wastewater Treatment System, Ardes Chemical and Biological Desulfurization and Flue Gas Treatment System. Armut compact and modular biogas system. Uh, as a perfect example to our integrated and holistic approach, this is a five-star hotel resort where there is limited road access. We developed a fully integrated and standalone solution. We treated the wastewater for recycling. We took the sludge, gardening waste, and together with the biodegradable kitchen waste, we fed them into our compact biogas plant where we generated biogas. The generated fertilizer at the outlet is completely safe to be used at recreational areas of the hotel. As I saw in the Tom representation, uh, they also took food waste, which can be an ideal and optimized solution for Armut. With our RMBR solution, we provide very high quality treated water that can be reused for many purposes. When integrated with solar panels, the system can work alone uh, in remote areas. Armut is a compact biogas solution that can be used both as a sludge and organic waste digester. It's a perfect solution for decentralized organic waste management. We are currently working on technology development and integration of Armut with vertical farming. This is a water desalination and demineralization plant that we delivered to Siemens, where we used our Arto and Aruf systems. We do have mobile water treatment systems named Armo. Armo is ultimately designed as a plug and play system. It meets either potable or ultra pure water needs and can be easily relocated and deployed one location to another. It's a perfect system to meet urgent and unexpected water demands. We also provided containerized water treatment plants for the International Committee of the Red Cross in order to produce potable water in Yuba, South Sudan. This project has a potable water production capacity of 12,000 cubic meters per day, which meets the demand of 80,000 people living in the region. That's a good example how much we can go beyond expectations with a fully containerized and scalable solution. 
As a stationary and integrated solution, I would like to give you the example of the plant that we delivered to POSCO. We delivered water and demineralized water treatment system together with industrial and sewage treatment system, which was designed with MBR technology. As I'm approaching to the end of my presentation, I would like to highlight this municipal wastewater treatment plant. This plant was designed with fixed flame attached growth activated sludge technology. The, the bacteria grows on the submerged plastic media. With this particular design, we treat the same amount of wastewater in one third of the space needed of a normal activated sludge plant. As a one shop solution provider, we design, manufacture and implement operate fully integrated solutions without any third party intervention. This is what sets us apart from other solutions in the market. Our edge allowed us to cater diverse portfolio of customers. We have designed and delivered solutions to international companies and NGOs globally. We chose Singapore as a hub to scale up our technologies and operations in Asia. We see promising opportunities in the region. In Singapore, we have already engaged a local representative. We see the future in Asia and would like to partner with prestigious entities, both on the public, private, NGO and venture capitalist space. We are looking for opportunities to deploy our proven containerized and integrated solutions and partner with leading players for stationary solutions in Southeast Asia. We look forward to working with you. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. And uh, our next company is then coming from Norway. We have Ule uh, presenting uh, Norse Biocast. So Ule, over to you. Thank you, Sami. Good afternoon, good morning to you all. Uh, Anupa, it's... Uh, Thank you for your presentation. It's always uh, nice to uh, follow the neighbor next door to me. Anyway, okay. I start my presentation asking the question, why pretreatment of food waste? Food waste handling is complicated. It's complicated because it involves several disciplines, technologies and attitudes. There are four main sources where food waste occurs, all with their distinct differences, both in terms of composition of the waste itself but also in terms of internal handling, collection, and logistics in use. This complexity paired with partly opposite interests create an environment where impurities and contamination of the resource always, always will occur. The end product from pretreatment of food waste is an energy-rich slurry we normally refer to as substrate. Through the biological process in the digester, biogas and digest is produced. Beside that impurities in the substrate may cause processual problems, it's the generation of the digestate that worries the most. Digestate is first class natural fertilizer where all nutrition are kept intact. It is obvious that a contaminated digestate neither will nor should be accepted in agriculture. Stricter standards are under elaboration, especially focused to problems that arise with micro and nanoplastics. I have been in the, or in the recycling industry for more than two decades, most of them in the waste energy sector. During that period, we have seen many different technologies and designs of pretreatment systems in use. As far as I understand, are the two observations and concerns that needs to be addressed in this context. First, most, if not all, system designs are different. And second, the content of degradable matter that follows the reject due to the insufficient separation, in most cases is significant with a huge impact of one's profit making. It is reasonable to think that there over the years has been a lack of focus of pretreatment in general, leading to insufficient solutions. However, we observe today that the industry now have come to terms with that the pretreatment is a bottleneck that must be focused more seriously. In my mind, there are no doubt that it is possible to purify food waste many different ways. The problem is that many processing steps is investment intensive and drive OPEX high. Simplicity, solidity, and standardization is all way of thinking. And we 
believe that our system has proven its justification. The BICEP has proven its efficiency and sturdiness over more than 10 years in operation. The machine works in a batch-driven process based on a patented centrifuge principle. As you can see from the prestanda, it is a multi-source machine with the capacity to process liquid and solid waste. The machine performs in three steps, separation or segregation as you call it, reject cleaning, collect more digestibles, and reject drying, remove liquids and moisture. Since the separation step do not involve any form of cutting or size reduction, the amount of microplastics are to a minimum. We strongly believe in standardization. The fact that a fixed process design enables more scientific approach in regard to development and trim of the system. It enables exchange of data and data mining from all plants in operation in addition to cooperation and training among operators of the system. The BPP system is fully automated and may be controlled remote. Until now, we have installed seven pretreatment systems in Scandinavia, basically to municipal owned waste facilities. All in all, around 250,000 tons is processed yearly. Three of our installations are planning for extension and duplication of biceps the coming year to increase throughput. All plants are used as showcases and to a certain extent training grounds. North Bargas was funded solely on the invention of the BICEP technology and the bio pre plant process design as a specialized company within pretreatment of food waste. Last year, we decided to involve ourselves developing pretreatment solutions for other complex waste streams as well to exploit our comp competence through access to new technology. Through the cooperation with Polar Metallurgica, we get access to expertise and equipment gear the dry part of the recycling industry. Altogether, this has enabled us to develop further and give us directions in the years to come. Except for over home markets, Scandinavia and North Bargas aim to play a role in the coming food waste shift within the EU, where more than 47 million tons needs of food waste needs to find its way to the digesters. We believe our technology and way of thinking fits the task in hand perfect. Regarding the Southeast Asia region, it's a matter of cooperation and long-term thinking. The region are in various stages of development in terms of economy, legislations, environmental awareness, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In addition, we know from assignments in Bangladesh and Korea that waste itself is very different from what comes out of the European meal. This call for a local-based partnership. We also believe that, uh, strongly believe actually, that the right partner also can play a role in our European and Scandinavian markets, whether we talk about products, service, or competence alone. <clears throat> to be able to operate in any market, in addition to the technical products itself, one need marketing capacity and sales, and a sales force that can find and contract business opportunities. A strong engineering capacity is needed, basically within the discipline of process engineering. And finally, with a financial capacity to meet tendering requirements. Recycling of food waste involves whole nine of UN sustainability goals. Let's do it the right way. Thank you very much for your attention. Great. Thank you so much, Ola, for your presentation. And then uh, we have one more company left. Uh, it's called River Recycle, coming from Finland. And we have Jan and Utinen presenting their solutions. Okay. Hello all. Uh, our company River Recycle cleans the rivers, recycles the plastic and uh, provides waste management. My name is Janne Nuutinen and uh, I'm a CEO of River Recycle. Uh, well, this slide may be familiar to many of you, but it illustrates the problem and, and from which sources the plastic waste ends up in the oceans. 
about 90% of all the plastic waste that re reaches the world's oceans gets flushed through the rivers. Littering, windblown waste, industrial waste and municipal waste. Uh, once the plastic gets into the sea, it decomposes very, very slowly. And uh, if current pollution levels continue, plastic will outweigh fish in the ocean by 2050. So who we are? Uh, our uh, key team consists of uh, 12 individuals who bring on board significant experience and expertise in their respective fields. The headquarters are based in Helsinki and Singapore. The local operations are managed in India, Indonesia, Thailand, Philippines, Nigeria and uh, Vietnam by local team members. Uh, River Circle is a startup company established September 2019 and the uh, second largest shareholder is Lamor Corporation, also a Finnish company. Lamor is a global leader in marine uh, oil spill recovery and uh, uh, the references include the deep water horizon cleanup in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, our goal is to stop over 60% of ocean plastic accumulation by establishing 500 river cleaning and plastic recycling points on the banks of the world's most polluting rivers. We have developed a global river cleaning as a free service business model and a system which removes plastic waste from heavily polluted rivers. We clean the rivers of plastic by creating a sustainable circular business that uses the plastic as a raw material. First, uh, we established a river-based collection unit to uh, immediately halt the flow of the plastic into the ocean. Uh, the river cleanup unit uh, scoop of the plastic from the rivers before it enters the oceans and transport it to the waste sorting site. This increased value is channeled back to the local community to establish land-based collection services, eradicating the flow of plastic in the, the rivers. And uh, uh, then uh, the project establishes chemical recycling facilities uh, to create value from the low value, hard to recycle plastic waste that will be otherwise end up in the environment. Uh, this enables plastic waste to be recaptured as a resource for the economy, like re replacing virgin fuels in the plastic production or as a cleaner source of fuel for shipping. And uh, a little bit more, we will work with local waste management companies and uh, waste picker cooperatives to provide the infrastructure to enable the segregating collection of different waste fractions. And then uh, finally, we implement, uh, uh, implement a stakeholder outreach project to engage surrounding households in the project. Uh, today, uh, our project development of, 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 uh, of uh, River Cycle covers nine countries with the help of uh, a dedicated team of professionals around the world. Currently in India, uh, River Cycle is installing a project that we clean up the Miti River in central Mumbai. Our team expects to catch up to 50 tons of plastic waste daily and preventing it from flowing into the ocean. Uh, we also building a project in the Sitarum River, Indonesia. Uh, Sitarum is river is one of the most polluted rivers of the planet. The river running through the suburbs and slums uh, of Jakarta and, and it's partially covered by plastic layer. Former fishermen uh, will be turned into waste collectors uh, and the project uh, is expected to retrieve between 70 to 200 tons of plastic waste from this heavily polluted river on, on a daily basis. 
So what we are offering to communities, we'll um, take care of the funding, uh, uh, arrange the installation of the river cleanup unit, as well as a paralysis unit with the technology providers, and also arrange the necessary trainings to operate the maintain the machinery uh, and uh, handle the sale of the parallels oil produced. So what we are looking for, uh, the, the rivers, yeah, and, 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 and uh, well, rivers and waterways that have high volumes of uh, floating plastic, and uh, that uh, also that there is a local interest in the river being cleaner, uh, for example, at uh, national level or local community level. And also we're looking for a, a local partner and uh, feedstock. Uh, alternatively, we can implement the project in, in two ways, uh, river cleanup and uh, paralysis or paralysis unit only. Uh, we simply can uh, create value in, in circular economy and then waste management uh, and then as well um, as field of chemical recycling. And uh, our team has a uh, high level of exper expertise related to recycling as well uh, as, well as uh, petrochemical, so uh, we are glad to help. And. Uh, I think that we have, might have something in common together with uh, Tomra. So uh, we are open to uh, cooperation. And uh, well, that is all I have for today. And uh, there are a number of moving parts not mentioned here. And uh, we look forward to discuss further with you about uh, possible cooperation. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Janne. All right, so that was the last company presentation. So we have heard eight uh, Nordic companies uh, presenting really, really interesting solution from the uh, industrial wastewater, uh, organic waste, and also all the way to river cleaning. Uh, let's open the floor now for the questions. And, um, and Anupa, maybe we hand over the stage first for you if you have any, any questions for uh, these Nordic companies. Thank you, um, Sami. Um, I, I believe that it might be best if there are specific questions about, um, uh, about the solutions that um, have been shown. I would believe the best thing would be to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion. The only comment I want to make is if anyone has questions about uh, particularly engaging with uh, relevant authorities uh, within Singapore, finding their way or asking any specific local questions or also similarly in other Southeast Asian markets, then feel free. Although our solutions are may not be a match, or not necessarily a direct connection. We are still kind of working within the same industry applications. We are still working within the environmental zone. So there are many common kind of uh, leaders that we can perhaps help you connect with, or we may come across and cross paths with um, kind of, um, for example, I know that a few months ago, there was a sludge treatment tender out at that point, um, the government had reached out to us to ask if we knew of any Nordic solution that they could bring. So sometimes we are asked those questions. It's very good to know. I made some notes. I'm assuming we will also have the pack. So I'll be very, um, I'll keep in mind, but also if anyone else wants to approach uh, for kind of those operational administrative and kind of the cultural know-how, then feel free. Okay, thank you, Anupa. Um, I think we we still have a little bit of time, and Anupa, it's okay for you. If if there are any questions from the uh, from this group, uh, maybe we can could take some of those here now. And uh, as always, uh, first comes first serve. So uh, show the virtual hands. Uh, Evren was with the old school physics hand, so you can go first. Thank you. Um, 
it was very uh, this is Evren from Artas Finn and it was very nice presentation on I really enjoyed it uh, with the uh, personal feelings also inside. Uh, actually, I was very uh, wondering about Tomra solutions in food food recycling and food processing because it was more focused on uh, deposits and uh, reverse vending machines, but I didn't hear much about that part. I will appreciate if you can give some insights also about those applications. Thank you again. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, so uh, thank you, everyone. I also equally enjoyed looking at your presentation. Um, you know, there are so many things that we don't know. We kind of hear at a very surface level. So very interesting. Um, food technology applications, um, I'm not an expert on, um, but I certainly can share some videos with you and I can certainly uh, put in touch with kind of if there is a specific area of interest. Um, so that might be probably the best way to do it. So Sami, if you can help me with um, her email, then I will share those videos with you. And then you can pick your specific area of interest and I can put you in touch with the right person within the organization. Also why I focused so much on deposit was because we were specifically talking about entry into Singapore. And I was kind of trying to give examples of how the process has been in various countries. And this is kind of the um, taking the common project across many different geographies, kind of trying to showcase how the approach has varied from place to place. That, that was the reason. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, we will do the email connections then, then uh, after this call. Then we had one virtual hand from uh, Riku. Okay, hi, thank you. So I'm Riku from Finnish Embassy and part of Sami's team in this program. So. Singapore. Singapore in all the strategic areas, when they look for solutions, they never go for one source of the solutions regarding the origin of the, the country origin of the solution and company of the solution. For example, electric buses, they are testing three different uh, large companies who would provide the pilots. And so what about ways? So you seem to have a holistic approach for kind of convincing Singapore of the right approach. What type of reach are you wishing to get out of this because it might be really hard to be a national level sole provider of certain solutions so what would be your advice for other companies in how to strategize in this it's a it's a very good question riku uh hello to you um it's a tricky question uh it is right that um um singapore singaporean government is very technocratic um they actually handpick their uh, their um, directors, their officers, uh, and I find that these are very intelligent people who are who are you know kind of the top performers, top performers in universities in relevant fields. So we here we get a mixture of kind of bureaucracy with a technocratic approach. Um, so I find in certain sections, the government is very black and white and it's trying to play fair and it's trying to kind of uh, um, be not seen as uh, a friend to one country and not a friend to another country, I was to put it simply. But we have a, we have a twist here. We, when it comes to environmental applications, uh, Nordic countries, have gained a reputation for themselves. Uh, we don't really have to sell anything because they really are very convinced that we are, and when I say we, I'm not talking Tom, I'm generally talking about the Nordic companies, are leaders in this space. Um, so we, we are not trying to sell um, Tomra technology at every aspect of the value chain, uh, but we are certainly, trying to drop a holistic situation solution. So then the way we are designing it is that the solutions will have to come from that part of the world, if you know what I mean, because that's where they exist. They do, just simply do not exist anywhere else. So if you want that level of efficiency, if you are trying to meet those targets, and if you want to create that level of behavior, then it has it's just coming from there because that's where it exists. Uh, now, in doing that, 
it has to be fair to everybody. So then we are also talking about a kind of a, 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 a wider value proposition. So we are offering to localize the skills, we are offering to partner with local um, entities. And so then in that, doing that, we are kind of keeping a balance of, of those things. And then when we talk, for example, the solid-based value chain, there, there are elements that are non-technical, but they can very much be other agencies. So example, logistics can very much be local-based. Example, um, um, IT ecosystem at the back end of these systems can be either local or coming from another. So when you draw up the whole picture, the, the environmental application may very much come from Nordics that will not be seen as being a pushy nation in that sense, because that's where the leadership exists. So, yeah. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Anupa, and thank you, Rico, for the great question. Um, do we have any other questions? Can I can I just follow up on that one a little bit, uh, Anupa? What sure. you're saying, and, and it's a very good point, a uh, strong point that uh, to uh, to uh, move into larger projects, infrastructure projects, you are as much a, a, a knowledge partner as a technology provider. Uh, for example, to, in your case, um, how how easy is it to navigate indeed with different uh, agencies or uh, or maybe government uh, ministries to find the door opener, uh, if you can use such a term, the right person uh, to first understand the the uh, the, uh, the challenges, but fully understand the problem statement, fully understand your solutions. But also being the decision makers for going forward. How how difficult is it to navigate in this bureaucracy and sustainability? Um, um, per Christo, you know this as well as I know. Uh, you have been kind of part of the journey in Singapore. Um, we obviously lean on to your organization quite a lot. Um, to sometimes help us open doors. But uh, we, we have a little bit of an advantageous position because we have a long standing relationship with multilateral bodies such as UNEP and WWF and you know AAPW and you name it. So we sometimes kind of lean onto that network yeah. for instructions if we need to. But what is more important is not that. What is more important is who is the targeted stakeholders, where to begin with. Now, in some cases, in uh, for example, as I was talking about the wastewater solutions, um, there are some really good laws and practices already in place. Um, so it's a matter of finding the li right local partner as opposed to really going to government straight up. Yeah. You may want to look at some of the programs that Economic Development Board, for example, has. They're very keen to bring um, environmental uh, leaders from Nordics into Singapore. Yeah. Um, and, and so they have some programs. And so it's very important that you kind of make yourself visible by way of local memberships, for example. Now, in if those offering local recycling solutions could be looking at establishing a local entity and then becoming a mem member of, for example, WMRAS, the Waste yeah. um, and Metal Recycling Association, whatever that might be. So I'm sure there are different industrial associations that will kind of give you the right platform to create that network, to start becoming visible, to being close to kind of what are the opportunities with EDB and similar organizations. So that's more important as the groundwork to do, to identify where to start. Uh, it's not always with government. Um, in some cases, I can see there is a direct application. There, there may be a need already. There could be some tenders out already for all that you know. So then those associations become a much better tool to, to find those partnerships. Thank you. Um, so, so to be member, I mean, companies coming in here, uh, they are not known. And to build up this degree of recognition, uh, of trust, of being visible, uh, to be associated with, uh, us, uh, let's say, um, yeah, you mentioned organizations or ecosystems that already have some presence, that already have built up some kind of uh, 
of uh, recognition uh, in Singapore. Uh, it would help the companies to, 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 to get this. Ab ab absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and to answer the second part of your question about how easy is it to nav navigate within the government. So, um, uh, as I said, it's a technocratic government. Uh, they're also very cooperative in how they're set up. So, for example, the way the Indian government works, or let's say the way I've seen in Indonesia, uh, the politicians have a lot of power in controlling um, all the key decisions. So you may have decision makers in the hierarchy, but at the end of the day, the politician is not supporting that vision. It will be almost impossible to get that uh, decision taken, right? Um, so you really have to somehow become visible at that level for a turnkey or kind of larger application. Uh, we don't find that with Singapore. We find that the agencies that are being given the responsibility to implement or draw are the ones truly responsible for that. So in that sense, it's very clear on who has the responsibility. So you kind of very quickly know who is the agency that you must engage with. Then it's about how do you reach? And then organizations such as yours, um, uh, Per Christer, are sometimes uh, help in those introductions. Sometimes it's kind of the big brother approach, you know, Tomra can lean on to multilateral organizations. You can lean on to Tomra. We can introduce those kind of things are also sometimes uh, quite effective, I find. Yeah, thank you. Good to hear. Good to hear. Relevant to the objective. Yeah, if as long as it's relevant to the objective, the government is very willing to listen. Yes, yes, yes. Good. Um, do we have them, any other questions from from our side? Going once, going twice. I might have some bad okay. <laughs> <laughs> just about to say no more bets. <laughs> Go ahead, Jan. Uh, rather do that one-to-one -one, uh, meeting if, if possible. So. Yeah, uh, absolutely, Jan. I'll be happy to. I mean, um, Sami, we can organize that, can we not? So, yeah, yeah. I'll be happy to. Thank you. Okay. Uh, very good. So with that, uh, I think that we can wrap up our session today. And, and really special thanks for Anu, but thanks for sharing all these uh, uh, good examples, good advices. Thanks for allowing us to pick your brains uh, this Wednesday afternoon. And thanks for spending spending your Wednesday afternoon with us mm -hmm. and, and sharing all the all the insights. Um, but uh, yes, with that, thanks again, everybody. Uh, stay safe, and we will then do those follow ups uh, later on. And uh, Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you very much. It was a Thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.